Assalamu alaikum. Mr. Moderator, our distinguished guests, brothers and sisters, our friends and, and our enemies. So before people speak about Khilafa and who's the Khalifa and I want to be the Khalifa, we discuss this, we say, Ya Akhi, before you speak about the Khilafa, are you the Khalifa in your own house or is your feminist wife the one who's running the show? But what about Hizb al-Tahrir? Hizb al-Tahrir. So you guys are trying to bait me into talking about all of these different groups and figures. Hizb al-Tahrir, I've said it before and I'll say it again. Uh, their mission of pursuing the Khilafa this is something that is good. This is something that all Muslims need to be supporting. This is something that we need desperately. Okay? We need a return of the uh, Khalifa. Uh, the, this is what the Sharia requires. The Sharia can't really be implemented in full without the, without the Khalifa, without the Caliph to administer it. At home, his wife basically tells him, Ya Allah, go to sleep. And he goes to sleep. Yeah, you're not even the Khalifa at home. Uh, and your building, no one listens to you. And your street, no one listens to you. Taib, you want to put a Khalifa of Muslims, an Imam who's going to manage this whole Ummah that is spread all over the place. And it is necessary. We need it to come back. And so as, insofar as any group, any group that is advocating for this, that's something good. That is something good. Because you have a brother talking about every ruler in every Muslim country taking him outside of Islam. I mean, brothers are reckless, man. Oh yeah, this guy, oh, he's a kafir and apostate. Oh, that guy, oh, he is double kafir, double apostate. It's like you're ordering a Whopper with fries and a, and a drink and you want to big up on it. Uh, government, an, an ideal state, an ideal nation should be led by these uh, Islamic laws that are strictly applied under which uh, I am not allowed to speak. I should be put to death for my ideas or homosexuals should be put to death, adulterers should be put to death and all these things. Uh, obviously, you don't agree that, uh, that, that liberalism is a, is, is a good system and you think that liberalism is a, is a terrible, bad, immoral system. But I want to ask you, where do you live, Daniel? I mean, I live in uh, the U.S. You live in the US. Why do you live in the US? I mean, this is a question. Can I just explain that this system of liberalism is imposed on the entire globe and that there is no country in the world today that actually implements the Sharia in, in the fullest meaning and sense of it? I wish, I wish I could go to a country and that's ruled by Sharia that the West won't bomb and sanction and destroy. I wish, you know, I wish I had that opportunity, but unfortunately I can't because of liberal supremacism. But that just seems like a way out of this, of this whole, uh, of, of this, of the whole thought because no. um, wouldn't it be more honest and more consistent with yourself, especially also to prove to others that you're trying to spread to your ideas too, that, um, wouldn't it be much better for you uh, to be consistent with your worldview to move to a country, for example, that is, uh, that is although it is not perfect... Although where? What country? Ideal, what country should I move to? What country should I move to? Any, 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 any country... Should I move to has... Saudi Arabia, where they are imprisoning scholars for saying anything in line with the Sharia? If I were in Saudi, example, yeah. right? For... Why are they doing that? Saudi is doing that because of who? The West, right? Because of Israel, right? Because of America, right? Oh yeah, this guy, oh, he's a kafir and apostate. Oh, that guy, oh, he is double kafir, double apostate. So you got to take it from the people that are clear in their da'wah. And this is another thing I want to move on, is that we hear a lot of criticism that you have no knowledge and you have studied no Islamic uh, sciences. You just, you know, you just uh, hodgepodge making things up. Uh, you have very little understanding. So can I, you know, ask you, um, uh, you know, to be honest and see what kind of, you know, Islamic sciences have you studied? Yes, mashallah, you've done your studies of Harvard, secular, etc. But can you give us some enlightenment on this uh, Islamic sciences, please? Sure, absolutely. Um, you know, I just want to note an irony, though, that uh, my credentials are only questioned when I criticize uh, certain figures. Uh, prior to that, they're really not looking at credentials. In fact, some of the people who now say that I have no credentials, I have no credibility uh, to speak at all about Islam, these are the same people that uh, gave me positions at their institutes and were actually inviting me to speak uh, and so forth. But then when they're the ones who are being criticized, uh, then suddenly my credentials are at issue. And I find it you know, ironic. Like I'll say that I might criticize someone for participating in a uh, pagan ritual, uh, an imam participating in a pagan ritual, and then my credentials are in question instead of that imam's credentials. Uh, why am I questioned instead of, uh, instead of he? So, I mean, that's a side point. And I mean, I'm, I'm very happy to talk about my credentials, and so I'll do that right now. Uh, but uh, again, I would like some consistency, right? I'd like some consistency.
consistency because we have many unqualified people who are given very high platforms and they're sitting on panels. Uh, they are board members of these Islamic institutions and these credentialed scholars who are criticizing me. Uh, there's, they have no problem sitting with and promoting completely uncredentialed people who are actually speaking many false things about Islam. And they have no problem with that. And, and the question of credentials doesn't come up. So anyone who wants to criticize me uh, on the basis of credentials, let's see some consistency. Let's see the same standard be applied to everyone. But uh, they need to be the same person. Yeah, there are a lot of scholars that are also activists. Like I work with Sheikh Omar Suleiman in Dallas. And mashallah, he's very active. Uh, you know, his scholarly credentials are beyond question, mashallah. So you got to take it from the people that are clear in their da'wah. Participating in a pagan ritual, and then my credentials are in question instead of that imam's. You know, his scholarly credentials are beyond question, mashallah. My credentials are in question instead of that imam's. You know, his scholarly credentials are beyond question. Yeah, be ready. What? Why are you even calling them ulama? Who's the alim there anyways? Name one alim. Scholars, and there are many scholars, I mean, other than uh, Sheikh Omar. Uh, there are other scholars like um, Sheikh Abdullah bin Hamid. Also, no one should be guilty by association. Again, he's repeating a principle with no basis, no evidence from the Quran Sunnah. No one should be guilty by association. Um, Say Aqidah with a Jordanian Sheikh, Sheikh Imaduddin Abu Hijla. That's a sign of love. You love someone, you remember. You love someone, you praise him. You love someone, you follow him. You follow his sunnah out of love. Not you follow the sunnah out of repeating hadith and Quran, and it does not reflect in the actions or in the heart. And the Prophet wasallam, he described our time very well. He said, there is people, they'll come, the Quran it will never pass their throat. Wasallam. What he said, Quran does not pass their throat. It means they memorize the Quran, they're hafiz. Big beard, mashallah, and everything. But the Quran never passed their throat, means they recite it with the tongue, but it will never reach their hearts. Those, they will be leaving Islam faster than the Aru will leave the bow. That's how fast they leave Islam. And those, if you really look at the characters of those in our time, you will find no love. You will find hate all over them. You sit in five minutes in their present, you feel uncomfortable. They talk, you feel you want to leave. The way they look, the way they talk has been described. The Quran never passed their throat. They say it every day 100 times. More than that. Like the speech. They need a little piece to say it. Because how much they say it every day. Daniel is being attacked and spoken about. The, the, the poor brother.